8 o'clock on the start of a Tuesday. Glad you're with us on Second Cup. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. We want to hear from you this morning about a number of things. Number one, we're talking about that bridge in Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge that collapsed overnight after a cargo ship wound up hitting one of the pylons. Uh, we know that two people rescued from the water this morning. One seriously hurt, the other miraculously not hurt at all. And we've got these wimpy cups here also, which is the bottom probably just falls off of them. Yeah, it's <clears throat> unbelievable that you see this video and you just, I mean, it's hard to believe that this happened. And, you know, now we're kind of breaking down what exactly happened. There's still really a huge rescue effort underway, too. They're looking for upwards of seven, people. seven people. The craziest part about this is, well, I guess the fact that it happened, right? But I guess if you go a little bit deeper, you can actually see people driving on the bridge while it was collapsing. And you can actually see, like, you know, they, they have a camera on this bridge, and right. you can see cars are going by the whole time, and you're watching the ship just slowly come closer and closer. I mean, look at the way that bridge just crumbles. It, it's truly unbelievable. I mean, this is, this is surreal. It is stunning to watch it collapse, but also now questionable so i i you know as an investigative reporter wonder now when was the last time this bridge was inspected why was there construction being done um what happened on the ship right. because now they're saying the power was out and and if you watch that video you can see the ship appears to go dark and then it looks like the lights come back on and right. then it goes dark again so the ship actually left the port in baltimore like 12 31 and the crash happened at 1 30. So it was a really relatively quick time that it took. It kind of like made a circle out and started to go, in theory, under the bridge, right? But ended up crashing right into it. I want to show you a live look right now. Uh, John Marrero has that pulled up for us. The ship is still stuck in this mangled mess. The debris Isn't that is substantial here. Look at the bridge, though. The bridge in the water, 47 degree water, no less. So there are people feasibly under the water still uh they had sonar being so, used overnight and, and take a look to the left where you see a helicopter circling right right now. these smaller boats are you know search and rescue boats there were divers in the water trying to find people okay so what i was saying was that while they were using the sonar they found vehicles in the water underwater so how many people are underwater where they are is still a mystery but again, we know two people were, in fact, pulled from the water here. Look at that. So the bridge literally collapsing on top of the ship here. So one person who they pulled out of the water, they said kind of refused medical treatment, appeared to be okay. The other person taken to the hospital with some pretty serious injuries. And that's the last update, really, that we had from police, fire, rescue crews on actual victims there. So all of this video, this live look coming from a chopper going over the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and this bridge in particular is of vital importance uh, to this Baltimore area. Uh, it's one of the major highways, one of the most used bridges in the area. Uh, and what's so interesting, I was just reading some reporting from Baltimore, this area in particular has some pretty significant impact on the nation's shipping absolutely logistics yeah. delivering uh not only for the nation but really the world this boat was going to what sri lanka you sri said lanka. yeah it was headed from baltimore to sri lanka apparently and so abc news was also reporting i was just telling ed this right before we started um that there had been some sort of warning um from some one of the you know like let's say like local departments um or like maybe a federal department we're talking baltimore right so and a big international shipping hub that um what was i telling you like I'm that gonna there say, was some radio right? communication that ahead the, of time that the ship had apparently tried to connect with officials on land and said hey they were losing control and this was according to abc news so it's just kind of wild so dennis i'm reading your comment here and lauren i'm reading your comment here about how this is one of your worst fears mm -hmm. and you know it's scary to go up you know on bridges it's scary to drive under uh dennis says it's scary to drive under any bridge these days the upkeep and uh, upkeep and detection of infrastructure has lost its integrity over the years uh so i'm i'm also i'm glad that you mentioned this because uh when i see this I then think about, okay, how, what is the impact locally? And so this, again, is a major shipping channel. We have 
a shipping channel in western New York in the Niagara River. So we're talking about ships that come in and out from Lake Erie that go from Lake Erie into the river under the Peace Bridge, mm -hmm. under the foot of ferry, the International Railroad Bridge, and the Grand Island Bridge. Well, and realistically, we see these big barges pretty often. In you know, the Niagara River, big, right. giant shipping containers. So I started going down the investigative rabbit hole here just to try and get some more information, especially um, as it pertains to our bridges. And what I found out is that there is an, uh, uh, an inspection of the Peace Bridge required by New York State every two years, though it seems as if that bridge is inspected about every year. So more routine than perhaps what the uh, standard is. And what I also found out is that there was just recently some maintenance done on the Peace Bridge, uh, which would allow for um, more structural improvements. So in 2019, according to Frontier Galvanizing, $100 million uh, worth of work was done on the Peace Bridge. That included more than 600,000 pounds of galvanized steel from Frontier. Uh, and what that work did was increase the strength of the current bridge to expand its lifespan adding rust proof coating and increasing the width of the bridge for pedestrian walkways, the observation deck and workers replaced the entire bridge deck as we know, uh, railings, light posts. It was uh, all of this to really create that all important border crossing uh, here in downtown Buffalo. Okay, so I wanna get to some of our comments right now. And I also wanna let people know if you're not able to see the comments, you wanna go out and come back in. That is according to our copies because apparently some people are having a hard time. Mary's saying air view puts it in perspective of how much of an area needs to be searched. Um, Danielle says, oh my gosh, just tuning in, were there people on the bridge when it collapsed? Yes, Danielle, there were workers on the bridge working on it and there was also traffic going across the bridge. Linda says, I'm praying for my family living in Baltimore that they don't use the bridge. Um, so I just want, I want to touch on Brian's comment that I have no idea what I'm talking about, about lake freighters going under the bridge in, in the Niagara River. So it may not be lake freighters, but there are big barges and there are certainly, it's a navigation channel that is maintained by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, so it allows for shipping if necessary in the river. Uh, you know, just because it's not a lake freighter doesn't mean that well, a maybe ship we wouldn't, maybe we misspoke, Brian, wouldn't be so, allowed to, you right. know, feasibly be in the same situation I as what we saw here. Right. I think the point is that something, you know, we do see these large right. ships. ships, right? Whether or not they're classified a specific way, we may have misspoken, Brian. Our apologies for that. Um, Melly wants to know, why did it lose power? Well, you know, Melly, that's something that we're still kind of waiting to learn a lot of information about. And really, this power loss, too, that's what you see in the video. And, you know, this is right, Mary. Imagine if this was rush hour. Uh, I, that's the I whole know. thing is that this happened about one thirty in the morning. Uh, you know, the reality is if it were a rush hour, this could have been a hell of a lot worse. So here's the report I was talking about earlier. It was a cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency report saying that this ship lost propulsion when it was leaving port. And it actually warned Maryland officials about a possible collision. The crew on the ship notifying officials on land that they had lost control. Um, so I just want to go back to as it relates to local bridges here. I also found out that uh, there is maintenance scheduled for uh, the Grand Island bridges this year. Uh, it's a $737,000 project uh, that would basically maintain cleaning for steel preservation on the Grand Island bridges. This is scheduled for this year um, being done by Union Concrete and Construction. But then in 2026, much of the same is scheduled uh, as well as, um, you know, they work to maintain the integrity of that bridge as well. Uh, now, what I also found in doing some research here from the federal government is that there are almost 900 bridges in Erie County. And of those 900 bridges, which include some federal bridges, almost 80 are in poor condition, which is almost 9% of the bridges in all of Erie County rated in poor condition. You know, this is something that, you know, we've covered extensively, right? You've done a lot of reporting on bridges and our investigative team has done some reporting on bridges. And, you know, I think that a lot of people kind of think, take this, right? Huge event. 
obviously horrible and then kind of think how how does this relate and some people were saying yeah it makes me think about every I, every time i drive over a bridge right every time i you know go by now again this could just be this could be an accident right we'll have to learn more about the structural integrity of this bridge but um you know it just it does you really mostly you think about the people who they're searching for right now well and that's what you're saying is exactly why i started doing all of this research because I, you know, there are people, we drive over bridges. There are thousands of people who drive over bridges every single day here in Western New York. It could be train track bridges. It could be um, bridges that go over the highway or the throughway. Uh, we know the Beaver Island Bridge in particular is being redone right now because that one was rated in poor condition. You could literally see the rebar sticking out uh, on the Beaver Island Bridge. Um, and then Jeffrey says, don't you think Erie County should fix the bridges instead of wasting money on wasteful projects? Uh, you know, and it's not necessarily Erie County's problem either. It's the state's problem. It's the federal government's problem. Uh, the state in particular is responsible for that Beaver Island Bridge. And Governor Hochul kind of sped things along after we brought that to uh, the public's attention that that bridge in particular was rated in poor condition. Well, this is kind of interesting. So I'm just reading this too from ABC News. The owners and managers of this actual cargo ship have said that all the crew members have been accounted for after the crash. All the crew members, including the two pilots, have been accounted for. There are no reports of any injuries. That's from Synergy Marine Group in a statement. And that's the owner and manager of this cargo ship. 22 crew members, including the pilots. And apparently they were all based in India. So Anto says the ship hitting the bridge is similar to a train hitting a car. The bridges are not set for an impact from a cargo mm. ship. They are for travel. Mm. And this bridge was used frequently in the Baltimore area. Uh, Bonnie says, so they hit the bridge. Right. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I think what it looked like from that initial video, and John, maybe we can switch back to that initial video from Baltimore. Yeah, let's watch it together. Uh, because it looked like it was almost hitting the pylon rather than hitting the bridge. Because if you right, think about right. it, the ship would be able to feasibly go under the bridge. Absolutely. Right. So I, I, I believe that was the plan, right, for it to go under the bridge, but it ended up hitting actually one of the support structures. Grace says they were in trouble. Couldn't they drop an anchor so they wouldn't move? I, you know what, Grace? I don't know. I can't speak to that. Like, that's a that's a big ship to have to stop dead in its tracks. And, you know? and you know how you think about a truck stopping, right? A, a, you know, one of those 18-wheelers. It takes forever for one of those trucks right. to stop. You can't stop on a dime. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kelly says, I mean, a boat literally slammed into the bridge. I'm not sure if it would matter about the structure. No, Kelly, I, I, I'm kind of with you there. Like, could this bridge have been, like, we'll have to wait and see, right, what all the reports show. Could this bridge have been in the best shape possible and this could still happen? Who knows, right? It is a massive ship. So Anto says, depending on the speed, an anchor might have made it worse. Uh, you know, and there are some ships that come in and out, um, you know, with um, a lot of, car I don't want to call it cargo, but like stuff. So... Um, for instance, like grain at General Mills, mm -hmm. like you see that grain being unloaded or the sand ships uh, right along Route 5. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm talking about there? Have you ever mm -hmm. driven along the Skyway? You see, you can literally see uh, all that stuff being unloaded. Um, so it's not like we don't have that right. kind of shipping in Western New York, because we do. Um, it, you know, perhaps not the container ships that we see in Baltimore going in and out of that large port. So Kelly's saying dropping an anchor can really take a while. Uh, Bob also mentioning what we kind of saw together, that ship went dark before it actually hits the support structure. Kim was asking, yes, there were cars on the bridge, Kim. And again, they're still waiting. They, they said they were rescuing at least seven or looking for at least seven people. They've brought two people out so far. One person appeared to be okay. The other person in the hospital. Yeah. Right Bonnie now. asking the same thing here. Have they recovered anyone? I'm praying for them and their families. So upwards of seven people still kind of unaccounted for at right. this point. Uh, but as you were mentioning, the people on the ship have been accounted for. Right. It's hard. To, right, Justin, you know, it's hard in these circumstances too, because you know, I don't know if everyone's an expert, but I think everybody just wants and hopes for the best here. And, and then also kind of thinks about what could this mean for our area. What could it mean for other people? You know, we always take right these big stories and we we kind of see there could be impact in other places, especially like where we live. So Lisa says she's praying for everyone as well. Do cruise ships go this route also? You know, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, let's, I mean, I, let me Google this really quick. Ships sail under the Francis. Now, someone so is mentioning, was could this have been done on purpose? You know, I I don't know. Again, like I told you, I, I was reading that um, 
one comment that the ship had actually connected with um, people on land and said, hey, we have lost our propulsion. We don't know if we're going to be able to, you know, move, like they kind of lost control basically is what they had said. And this was this international report saying that the crews notified officials they lost control. So, you know. Okay. So I'm just reading from sky.com, sky news, uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. Um, the ship collided with one of the pillars mm -hmm. while under control of the two pilots. So it didn't hit the bridge itself. It hit the pillar. Right. The firm said the exact cause of the incident was yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to find if there, you know, what goes under. Oh, okay. So, I mean, yeah, it looks like it. So there's a, I'm finding a YouTube video of uh, Royal Caribbean's Enchantment of the Seas going under the key bridge. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it looks as if cruise ships use this area. So yeah. that might not be happening for a while. Well, you know what? I, of course, like we absolutely think about everybody here who's impacted and all these, you know, the people who are searching for them and, you know, best wishes to everybody. Then, you know, you do also think about, boy, that's a huge transportation method for people mm -hmm. in that area. Like w what replaces a bridge? Well, and you know, what's so interesting. I, um, didn't we just recently see a bridge collapse too uh, in another area? John, do you know what I'm talking about? There was just recently a bridge collapse and it seemed like they were able to get the bridge. Oh, I think it was in Pennsylvania. Actually, yeah, that was a couple years ago. Or last, no, it was last year. Yeah, it was right before Molly's bachelorette party. But it, it was, was in that area. brought back up online pretty fast. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was a little bit different than this. It wasn't Absolutely, over the water. I'm just saying, like you know, it was on land. They were working fast to at uh -huh. least bring that bridge up, knowing how vital it was to that area. You just have to assume it's got to be really hard to, you know, like make up for something that's crossing you across water. Sure, right. Um, you know, what's interesting too, is that when you're looking at where the ship was going under the bridge, um, you know, and I'm certainly no expert here, um, but I, you know, know a little bit about no, no, navigate. <laughs> I know a little bit about navigating in the water. Um, you know, you're supposed to, it did not look like this ship was going in the area where it needed to be. So in other words, what you see red and green buoys mm -hmm. in the water, yeah. sometimes you're supposed to be going between them. Right. Uh, Peter, and it did not look like that was the area. Peter is right. He's talking about that bridge you were talking about. It was in the Philadelphia area because right. it was right near. We went there actually for my friend's bachelorette party. And I saw actually where they had it, um, you know, kind of like for a reroute, right, for what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Um, I just don't know how easy that would be for here. I mean, when you watch this, it is, it is, what'd you say, John? Okay, so John, thank you very much. John, our producer behind the scenes here, saying that it, it took about 12 days. Mm -hmm for that one bridge I was talking about in Pennsylvania to come back up online. Uh, so obviously they, they work fast and that was on the I-95. Uh, so that's a very busy and active interstate. Um, Donald says, looks like the ship only goes dark after the collision. I don't think that's true so, though. It looked like it happened beforehand. Yeah, and you know what, Donald, this video that we have here probably doesn't do the beforehand part of this justice because there is other video out there we can kind of see the ship go dark so okay watch right here um see yeah it's really hard to see but in in other video that we watch you could kind of see the ship go dark right and then the lights went back on and then it went dark so um you know you'd have to kind of find the video that that takes you a little bit further back tara i'm i'm wondering your comment here where did you see that video which video are you referencing um I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Um, Anto says, it looks to have trying to control a ship. It looks to have trying to. Like they're maybe like they're trying to. Okay. Where low tide was to fit under the bridge, but spun out. Mm. Uh, and then, yeah, Melly says it, it goes out, but then comes back on again. Mm. Uh, Karen just linked to some video here. So, um, you know, maybe that's an, an alternate view for you to check out. Uh, and then Lori says, I saw this in the middle of the night and it was pitch black. Uh, Governor Hochul, just within the last couple of seconds, releasing a statement saying that she has reached out to the governor of Maryland, letting him know that New York is prepared to offer any assistance if necessary. She says, my heart breaks for all those affected by the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge as rescue efforts are underway. The mayor's also tweeting right now, the news of the bridge collapse is deeply distressing. Thoughts and prayers with all the emergency responders, the families impacted. 
not the city of Buffalo standing with that mayor there and the entire Baltimore community. Uh, my dad actually on a ship right now uh, and talking to us nonetheless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, how fast was that ship traveling to bring down the bridge after hitting a support column? It doesn't even look like it was going that fast. It's so big. Right. I don't, I feel like that's what Edna said. Like I'm looking around our studio and our studio is it's a pretty big room. And like when you look at all the containers, like the shipping containers that are on that ship, I'm like, that's got to be a huge like ship, huge barge. Uh, Barbara says this is a massive bridge. Our intercoastal bridge in Florida is being replaced. Timeline three plus years for completion. Uh, and then Sean, okay, let me take a look. At, Sean sent me a YouTube video, so let's see. You know, okay, so I got to tell you too, there is a bridge being replaced down like in uh, Florida where I was visiting too. And I mean, right, building a new bridge over water is an extensive project. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, the whole community was talking about down there. Well, and let's, I mean, face it. I mean, they don't they don't want to have to build a new peace bridge, right? Like, that was the whole thing. Sure. That was why it's being maintained, and it was all this back and forth. And, you know, and we talk about, right, that bridge from last summer, too. Like, at least, not at least, but I'm saying that, like, that was on land versus over the water. Like, it's just got to be such a massive undertaking. Uh, yeah, Crystal says this is crazy. John saying, I hope it wasn't on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to wait to see before we, you know, find out what happens here uh, because this investigation is going to take some time to complete. And it certainly um, is not an easy investigation with so many little and major nuances at play Important here. to know, right? This just happened around 1.30 this morning, right? So this is new information that's coming in. We're learning more as this goes on and those rescue efforts are still underway right now. Justin says, bridge projects are very intense. I watched the Mario Cuomo bridge being constructed over the Hudson River. It took many years. It certainly did. Um, Tim wondering, is this what journalism has come to? Um, Tim, glad you're with us. Thank you so much for sharing your voice with us. If you have any questions or concerns, we're certainly happy to answer them. But is this what journalism has come to? Um, look, we're all just having a conversation trying to get the facts out to you and understand them as they pertain to the situation Tim, right this now. this is our show called Second Cup. We do it every day at 8 o'clock and we hit on different topics. This obviously brings breaking news. So we're bringing you the latest information, what we know. Um, and you know what? As I mentioned, this happened at 1.30 this morning, so there's still a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of answers right now. So bringing you the latest as we know it, as we learn it, you're hearing it with us. Uh, switching gears this morning, perhaps to Canal Fest. How about this? Uh, should Canal Fest go on as planned in the Tonawandas? It's okay. a big problem right now in both areas. So it's a long festival. North Tonawanda, it's North Tonawanda and City of Tonawanda, right? It's an eight-day festival. NT has said, listen, it's going to go on no matter what there. They're comfortable with at least holding a part in NT. Uh, the city of Tonawanda, though, is set to make a decision today. And their big reservation here, they said, is police. So it's a long festival. Mm -hmm. I think it's an eight-day eight festival. Yep. And it does require a lot of resources, not only from two cities, but really the county as well. Now the state said that it's willing to contribute some money to make sure that this goes on without a hitch. Um, but because of the public safety issue, the city of Tonawanda might not have it this year or be part of the two-town festival. The mayor was saying it might stretch the resources too thin, so we're going to have to wait and see. But again, the mayor and NT saying this is going on no matter what there. So maybe it'll just be the North Tonawanda Festival. Connie says, yes, bring on Canal Fest. Diane says, Canal Fest has become a big mess and wackos come out of the woodwork. Uh, Grace says, I think the Canal Fest should be brought back to Buffalo in the square because... Everything else was taken from us, and it's easier for the elderly to get there. Uh, they just take the bus right downtown. But it's the reason it's Canal Fest is because it goes over the canal. Right. John bringing up another big topic today. But, you know, we had to talk about this bridge, obviously, but there's a lot of stuff going on in Western New York, too. People having to pay more for those PSLs. Um, I actually put that article up right now on my Facebook page, uh, Katie Moore's WKBW page. John, I saw that you commented on it. So if you want to talk about that, feel free to go there. We can have a conversation about that there. I don't, there's a lot going on. Bottom line, people are going to have to be paying a lot more for their tickets in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll keep you posted about that bridge collapse. Just unthinkable, really, as a, either, a, you know, and we're thinking of the people who were affected here, the people in Baltimore, everyone really going to be affected. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of questions. Now is the time to work on those rescue efforts, mm -hmm. think about everybody, and then we ask those questions and figure out what happened right after. We'll keep you posted on WKBW.com. we got to get back on TV. Have a great day, everyone.